Hey hi, what's up everyone, it's Jack here, your favourite tour guide, and I'm going to be giving you enough reasons to make Malta your next travel destination. So this is the Valletta Medina and St Julian's part of my video. This video is going to be in two parts. I will be showing you the beautiful island of Gozo and the wonderful Blue Lagoon in my second video. So this is the Radisson Blue in St Julian's that we stayed at. St Julian's is in the top middle of the island. It's quite close to the capital Valletta and it's also relatively close to the beaches as well. So it's a perfect location if you want to have the best of both worlds. So the Radisson Blue in St Julian's, absolutely wonderful hotel that we stayed in. We were on the seventh floor and we got this great view and it was just fantastic to see the sunrise every morning as well. This hotel had so many pools outside and I could definitely imagine that if you visited in the summer you would definitely not regret it because it would be so hot, so wonderful to enjoy it, honestly. That, that building that I was pointing at that's the Dragonara Casino and if you're into casinos, St Julian's is the place that you should stay in. So this area here, this is St George's Bay, this is really close to our hotel, this is a 5 minute walk. Really nice, convenient beach to get to and you know, you can just enjoy it just down the road, you know. One other thing that's the, Mal the Maltese especially, they really like their cats. Cats is a massive part of, they're, they're everywhere in Malta, like this is cat village. It's not really like a village, it's like a small area where the cats can just stay, the homeless cats, and they just get fed and they have a little home to, to stay in. So this part here, this is Spinola Bay. If you're in St Julian's, if you're in Malta, visit Spinola Bay. Spinola Bay is such a beautiful place to look at. It's got the boats in the, in the bay and the lights are really beautiful at night and you've got this massive array of restaurants which are along the bay as well uh, which you've got to check out as well so in St Julian's also I forgot to mention the restaurants are a massive part of why you should stay there as well so this is the love statue which is actually in St Julian's as well they have a little bridge, it's a bit like Paris, you know, you've got the locks, the love locks in there. And it's just very cute and very nice little uh, attraction there. That church there, that's the Church of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We didn't visit that, but that's, a, that's one place that you can visit as well. And as you can see on the map here, St. Julian's, right in the middle, is actually very close to Valletta, half an hour from, from Valletta as well. First restaurant that I'm going to be talking about here, Galulu. Lulu, recommended by a taxi driver, 4 out of 5 of my rating because we didn't try it that much but the food was pretty good anyway. Uh, second place, Lo Straccio, 4.5 out of 5, same rating on Google as well. Fantastic seafood they did, great oysters, uh, they, we had a squid spaghetti and a tuna steak and quality honestly, you got to just check it out. So the third place that I recommend you visit is Gozatan. We actually went there twice. Uh, I got the rabbit and she got some uh, spaghetti, I can't remember what it was, but great food there as well. So the neighbouring uh, town of St Julian's is Salema. Salema, just a very small cute place, nothing too big about it. You've got a restaurant called Takris there, which is a Maltese restaurant as well. Um, the food was not bad, I think I chose the wrong thing on the menu, that's why I only gave it 3.5. Yeah, I had some uh, lamb stew or something, but check it out if you, uh, you want to have some good Maltese food. So here we took the bus 14 from St Julian's to Valletta. That's the new parliament building there on the right. And Valletta was absolutely amazing. 
you got these really cool beige buildings everywhere and on a clear blue day like that day we had it was wonderful everything was so tidy and really clean honestly So this was the only food that we had in Valletta. It was called a place called Cantina Cafe. They did something called skillets there. It was very convenient because we were in a bit of a rush, but it did the job. So I rated it 3.8 out of five. This is one of the main attractions in Valletta. It's called uh, St. George's Co Cathedral. Wonderful cathedral. And in this video, it does not do it justice because you've got to check it out. So here, this is Fort St. Elmo. Fort St. Elmo is one of the forts that exists in Malta. It guards the Mark Samset and Grand Harbour, and you've got the best views. It's on the tip of Valletta, and it just honestly delivers with these incredible views of Valletta and the sea. You can also get a lot of horse, uh, horse ridden carriages everywhere. So you've got loads of them just scattered about in Valletta. You can just have a little trip down the down the coast and it's just really beautiful so here this is the best viewpoint in Valletta this is the upper Baraka gardens remember that name because this place is wonderful you've got these this panoramic view of Valletta that's literally like insurmountable. You've got these cannons at the bottom there and that's because the Lascaris war rooms are right under the under the gardens and the war rooms here I think those were used in the Maltese war um, so if you're into your history check those out as well. So this is the Valletta waterfront, this is just next to the Grand Harbour with all the boats on the left and the Valletta waterfront has lots of great restaurants uh, that you've got to check out and it's just really nice to relax and just have a, have a coffee or whatever you want to do. You've got restaurants that I recommend, Brown's Kitchen, Bistro 516, Tau Captain Valletta, all these ones really top on uh, TripAdvisor. Also, a lot of movies and TV shows were filmed in Malta, including Game of Thrones. So I know for all you diehard fans out there, you've got to check those locations out as well. Next place we're headed to is Medina. Medina, you can get to like 45 minutes from Valletta, bus 51, 52 or 53. It's basically the old city of Malta. You've got this very historical buildings here and it's like walking through a piece of history because you've got these really cool places that haven't been that, that have left untouched for like ages. This is the Paris Church of St. Paul and you've also got the St. Paul's catacombs as well, which were the first catacombs I've, I've ever been to and it was pretty damn cool. You've got these like tunnels, there's like a massive network of tunnels and it's like a maze you can easily get lost in there and you've got really cool artifacts as well So moving on, this is the Medina Old Gate here. This is actually where the 
original old town of Medina existed within these walls. It's a bit like a fortress, a bit like a castle if you like. Um, it's a really definitely the, the main attraction that is in Medina that you've got to check out. It's got just really nice history behind it, really cool buildings and, and cool things to check out. The streets are really narrow in this part of town, so if you're going at night it's actually a bit scary as well. So I recommend you definitely go during the daytime to fully appreciate it. So one of the main attractions that you have in this Medina area is actually a place called St Paul's Cathedral. Yeah, a bit like London. It's not as big, doesn't have the round dome, but it's still architecturally stunning as well. And that's it there. Other places that are, are, are there, Plaza Falson, which we didn't get to check out as well. So finally, this is Fontanella. Number six on top dessert shops in, in Malta. Great panoramic view as well and they did fantastic cake and wonderful milkshake honestly absolute quality make sure you go check that out if you go to Medina so finally just to wrap it up here make sure you check out my second video that's going to be coming out soon of the neighbouring island of Gozo and of the Blue Lagoon which is unmissable literally and make sure that you like and subscribe this video make sure that you're Staying tuned for more because I will have loads more travel videos in the future and hopefully it will be more vlog style from now on as well. <laughs>